Okay, let's uh, tuck the center with the pawn. This mini series is looking at my ultimate chess law, the law that I work with based on the evaluation that I've done over the years of the games that we've played. So I'm going to capture, keep it nice and simple, straightforward. But the key thing is really taking time as well, pacing. Even in the faster games, you still have a moment of pace. So we could just put a check on the king to see what he's going to do. It's kind of overworking the queen, but let's keep it simple. Position's not going to be too bad. So check on the king, straightforward. And we can simply capture the queen. Don't really want to get too arty because there's nothing else. We could bring the bishop out and that would be like an act of developing a piece. But then their knight can come out and it's attacking the pawn here. And then we get embroiled in bringing the knight out supporting here. And it's all that tension, keeping tension at the right moments. So we don't want to overthink the situation, simplicity would be key, but let's have a look at developing pieces as well. So we're going to support the Queen as well as develop a, a piece. And let's see how that transpires. It's a whole heap of tension coming in, knights coming in, tacking the pawn. Maybe the Queen just simply takes, but at least we've developed a piece. I don't think the knight's come coming here. Might even look to touch onto the queen. Oh, they've actually done that one. So, do we want to keep any more tension at all, really? We could swing the queen across or we could move the queen out of the way. And then we've got a two on one on this pawn. It does have two on one protection, but then it does allow the knight to come in and attack the pawn. It's also attacking the queen as well, so we would have to move the queen out of the way and then they've got a successful two on one. So I think, not going to over egg the pudding and just go for simple. At least we have a piece developed. So next thing is putting a check on the king. Simple, straightforward. Not much that's gonna get in the way. So we can take and now that disturbs the king. So in our, in our world, we get the 20 pointer, which is the king doesn't have castling rights anymore. So in our heads, we've reached 20 points of material in terms of that loss in time and the position on the board. But you have to make something of it, obviously. So I'm going to castle with the intention of potentially putting a two on one here. They've quickly jumped down with their knight. So we could hit the knight with the pawn. I think we'll do that, actually. I'm going to hit the knight with the pawn rather than develop this piece at this moment. Don't know what they're going to do. I mean, if they jump here, we can take the pawn, just get the bishops off the board. So it's not too. Oh, it's jumped that way anyway. So it's actually attacking the bishop though on this occasion. So if we take, and then he takes, then we take his um, bishop and we would have a pawn up. So I'm actually taking the pawn. Knight takes and then we take the bishop. Or maybe the bishop takes and then it equalizes the situation, which would make sense. But they've not gone for the make sense one, so we'll capture. And we're not actually plus one at all because the king can simply capture. So obviously the rook is coming to hit the king when they take the pawn. Because it is in the centre of the board. We have to try and make something of this situation. I thought we were going to be plus one there, but um, that didn't work out like that, did it? So we put a check on the king. I don't really know why that took so long. And, oh, we could look to do this, but it's just going to block, isn't it? Should we rather develop the knight first?
So he's actually looking to get rid of his rook, but maybe he's just going to double. Both looking to own the file. Okay, so if we take then his rook comes across. Knight could come here, put a check on the king, upsets them a bit. I'm actually going to do that. Get the knight in the game. Obviously the king's going to move because there's no point doing that because the knight won't won't be behind the king anymore. Where does the king move? Safety, yep. Alright, so we could still go for that, but then his knight would just take. Is there a better position? Let's have a look at the threats that we have at this moment in time. Look at what they've got. So we're both pinning our knights to each other. Good push. Any benefits? And we could just push the pawn. He might look to jump here though, get his knight down with rook tap 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 tap. I'm going to push. It looks more productive. Gives the king a bit of flight square as well, breathing space. So this could be a long draw now, end game now. So we have to look at um trying to make sure we're covering off the blind spots and try not to overthink. So the king has moved further into the um into their den. So if we do touch onto the knight, he's going to escape the rook cap rook. Goes for a little check. Okay, it's so gonna to touch the knight, smaller piece attacking the higher piece. Elements of putting a check here, maybe. Or do we just go for the swing here? Or do we just take the rook off the bar? It was always going there anyway. Now we don't want to over egg the pudding again. I mean, his rook is actually on our knight as well, let's not forget. So we could go with the check on the king to win a tempo. King comes across and he's got two on one on there. Might not be worth it so i think it's just the rook taking like we were talking about at the beginning rook with a check rook comes across hit here where does the knight go knight's got this spot with a check on our king there's a back rank element as well isn't there so if we went to hit the rook, the rook comes down, but then obviously we get, well we won't get back around because his knight is going to be there. Okay, let's go with that. So hit the rook. Obviously comes and attacks it. Do we attack his knight? His knight's got a check on our king. But then we would get the back around checkmate. Well, after the rook goes back. That's the picture I'm seeing panning out, but I bet you any money it doesn't work like that. It's not going for it, it's keeping his king safe. Oh, well, that's a horse of a different colour, isn't it? So can we take advantage of that then? Night, night, night here, coming here. Let's go here. Just giving up this pawn. Oh, giving that pawn up. And it's actually defending this area as well. Ooh, well, let's just bring the rook here. Maybe there's an exchange of some type that we can get away with. I feel more active and let's just take double the pawns up let's swing and attack some pawns maybe put them on the defensive a bit just flickered didn't it they're thinking of leaving the game yeah so we put them on the defensive a little bit 
but they are plus one because we made errors. So I'm going to come down, we've got two pawns, they can't defend both of them. So we'll take one, so we've got the pawn back. It's got an active king though, so that's always a benefit. Now our rook is probably going to come here to stop the rook from getting centralised. It's not done that, so get our king up. Probably should have brought the rook centralised, shouldn't I? <laughs> Still have escape areas here, it's probably chomping up a bit to do this. Or that, whichever, yep. So I'm going to come up and attack the pawn, it's got no protection. All simple chess. Still looking on the uh, on my blind spots, looking on the back end, just seeing what the opponent's attempting to do. We can get this pawn off the board as well because I've got a check on the king. So it's like a skewer type check. Going to capture. Now his rook's going to be looking to attack around here. So we can do this. Always wondering now because if he gets his king close to our king, does he have some sort of check position like he's trying to do now? with his rook. So we could come here but um key thing is his rook's probably going to be coming down here. So if he gets the chance to do that if we move here then he's gonna move here and putting checks on. So I think just thinking a bit more advanced maybe coming here blocking that off rather than going for all the pawns. So I have this sense that it, because his king's so advanced up the board we're going to get end up getting trapped. His rook's going to start taking our pawns off on the back and all the hard work that we put into getting a half decent position will fall to the wayside. So it might look like a non-move but we've explained why. I mean, oh, okay, so he's come down. So we could get his rook off the board because we've got more pawns, well one plus one. So I'm going to put a check on and I don't think we can save the pawn because the king can just come across and get it. So I might as well push it up a little bit so he's got further. Oh he's gone behind, that was a mouse slip. That must have been a mouse slip. Oh dear, it happens. Oh, they've gone for a rematch. Let's go for it. <laughs> I think they're a bit mad now. <laughs> They're a bit mad because that was a mouse slip. <laughs> it happens. Okay, so let's get back onto the horse again. So they're going to play really fast because they're really angry. So we're going to pace simple direct moves to hopefully remove pieces from the ball strategically. Or to threaten major or minor pieces. Or to block the threats from the major and minor pieces from the opponent. So that's what we're going to try and do. So we're developing the bishop here, everything's all pretty neat, pretty safe, fairly comfortable. Got to bear in mind now the psychology of the opponent is that they just lost that game based on a mouse slip in their eyes. So they're angry. So we have to use that anger against them. Smaller piece attack and higher piece. We don't want to overexert in any way, shape, but smaller piece attack and a higher piece again. Okay, so we're fairly happy. And let's castle now, keeping king safe. So at this moment in time we're keeping keeping tension per se. We're not looking to jump over the um over the mountain. We could hit this palm, making space on the edge. So a smaller piece, attacking a smaller piece. Rooks don't have a place in the center of the board really, so maybe we'll go with the knight and then just bring it back again. Or do we lose out in the center if the knight goes? So was that a bit of an eager, oh, he's not actually going for anything, so 
we have to watch for the placement of the queen as well you know based on my experiences um, you've got to monitor what you're doing with the queen and any types of predictions that we've got going on I believe I'm going to capture the pawn let the rook breathe so I've got to be able to rewrite any predictions that we've made every move that we make the tables may change or the picture might look different you know when you've actually made the move because you may have left the piece under, under def, undefended or unprotected, whichever. So then you have to reassess your calculation. So constantly after every move, I've personally got to, oh, he's given up a pawn. Or has he? Does it improve his position? Knight takes. I, I think the knight can come back, can't it? Although this pawn doesn't have any support on it, does it? So his rook's going to come down. Yeah, his rook's just going to come here. But we can take the bishop, queen takes, and this pawn's falling anyway. Okay, so we know this, so I'm going to take, there's no bishop attacks on our rook, is there? And this is the rewriting prediction situation we were just talking about. Because we do that to avoid tunnel vision. So we're going to capture here. And once we've tried to avoid the tunnel vision as best possible, then we can face simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board and we go through the process again and within, within all of those types of areas that I need to work on there's obviously my main candidate moves you know which are basically position is my position solid and it's on sure footing is there a check check on the king or a check on a key piece or a check on a minor piece and does it make a, a solid attack towards the king area at all in any way shape or does it really give a better solid position and um, the particular move that you're making as a check captures make it give me a solid position it always comes back to having a solid position or a better position but definitely not a worse position and any threats attacking their major pieces with minor or lesser pieces which usually works out a lot better if you've got a smaller piece attacking a higher piece knights hunt the bishops in our mantra but there are occasions where we reassess and say well is that going to help bishop can move i think it's going to take this time okay so the queen now is targeting this pawn here we can double up this pawn supported by the bishop at the minute. Rook doesn't have any play really up here. Knight could attack their bishop. Bishop could attack through on the knight, but there's nothing behind the knight. So knights hunt the bishops in our mantra, so we'll keep that simple and attack the bishop. So it's always key to look at supporting pieces as well as best possible in this sort of type of position it could go either way and i think you know if they start pushing through with this pawn here have we got it blocked off enough oh exact move <laughs> i love it i love it yeah if they start pushing through here do, do we need to be mindful of that if we take opens up the rook i like that sort of position because it targets this area here I'm actually taking because knights hunt the bishops in our mantra, so I'm sticking with that ethos. If we take, we're probably bringing the knight into the game, but I think maybe they'll take the pawn because they've got two pawns and they're bringing this pawn back in line. Is there anything better? I mean, I'm waiting for to, to do something with this bishop. We could come here to attack this pawn. I think the pawn's going to disappear. If we go here, then it's gone. If he take, sorry, if he takes, then we take, then it's gone either way. We could push this pawn to support, but that looks a bit lame to me. So I don't really want to entertain that. So I'm simply going to capture. And this is where the hope comes in is that, well, does it improve my position? Bishop supporting this pawn, don't like this. this. My bishop almost feels like it's kind of backward. 
So I'm tempted to just come here and if he doesn't take then we just come here with a check on the king but then the bishop's just going to be by itself so that is the kind of pitch I was looking at but it doesn't look too meaty. My other option obviously is bringing the rook here opposite their queen and people will panic when you put a rook opposite the queen. Okay so I thought we could just go and attack the knight with the bishop. If we're looking at good and bad bishops, this is a good bishop, so in essence, do I really want to get rid of it? Big story, big story. What do we do now? Choosing out of the candidate moves that we have for ourselves, position. Not too happy with the position, but I feel like just going here with the pawn small potatoes I do like that that but it doesn't have any weight on it once the king's moved if if he doesn't take well where do you go from there if the bishop's stuck there by itself and there is this basic thing here but then it does have the pressure coming onto this pawn but the rook can come here but then his knight's got this here so I'm actually going for a small potato move, which is this. Out of all of those, just for a positional sake thing. I know the bishop's not really supposed to be supporting a pawn. But I think I need to wait for them to kind of overextend. And he's probably going to want to get rid of maybe this pawn. Because they want the knight in here. So I can probably pitch it. Ooh, one of the pawns came down, okay. So we could take, and they take, and they've got an elevated pawn. Or we could push up, he's still got an elevated pawn. I'm going to go with this, because we do have the option of attacking their queen with the rook. So I'm going to bring the rook here, attacking the queen, a smaller piece attacking a higher piece. Got to be mindful what he's trying to do, maybe with the knight, but the bishops are covering at the moment. So we're going at a decent pace. We are thinking simple. Do have this as a little stealth move type thing. So just bring the bishop here. Or do we wait and do we actually just go with the rook first, making it look like we're going for the queen? Then we take our time with the bishop coming here. What does he have? One, two, three. Yeah, let's bring the rook here. Like I said, players don't like rooks being opposite the queens. If they're awake, they're going to mobilize. So we have the next idea of the stealth coming here. Doesn't look like he's overextending his knights. They're just standing there holding court at the minute. And we're not overextended at the moment, it's just this pawn doesn't have any support in it whatsoever. Oh, that might even be... But we can't get there, because his knights are protecting everything. So we're going to go with the bishop attacking the rook, so we will win the rook because the queen has to move. Because we have the rook x-raying through to the queen. So I've got to watch the time, but it's four minutes and we're, I think we're working at a nice pace um, explaining everything that we're working through. So this is like me, my ultimate chess law, if you like, just working through each individual move. And, you know, every chess player's got their own chess law, you know, everybody's got their own ideas on how they operate within the game, what they would prefer to do. Just a bit unlucky that this knight is protecting this area here. So we will take the rook off the board. And we could elevate the rook to try and get a doubling situation. We don't need to rush this. Could x-ray through to the rook so the rook can't move because obviously we've got a pin through on the queen. His knights are going to be looking very angry. His queen is targeting here. So somehow they'll be wanting to get something done. So I think putting an x-ray through to the king obviously can simply move. But if he does move, we can win the rook. 
So maybe the queen's coming over to protect. Maybe not so far behind, but maybe just jumping here, supporting. So they, oh, we just said that they'll lose. Ah, okay, and they've gone. 